stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. UFC, Bantamweight, Trevin Jones. We just heard the news that you were suspended and you were fined by the uh, the Nevada Athletic Commission for marijuana. Has this has this, has this been something that you've known about for a while, or is it something that you just found out about the last couple of days? Yeah, it's been going on ever since after the fight ended. Um, um, it's nothing I was too worried about because it was already declared. But the way it turned out, yeah, it's something new. In the video that you posted on on Instagram, you explained you know, in, in bits of how you really felt about the situation. And uh, let's get into that. The first thing was, you know, Nevada, they knew heading into the fight that you you did smoke marijuana a couple of days before because if you you took this fight on a couple of days notice, so, so there's not much you can do. You could just be truthful about everything. I couldn't get it out of my system. The, the care list, the first papers we filled out was the USADA papers and... It was to enter the RTP drug testing pool. That's the first papers I filled out when I was actually as conscious as I was, you know? And, yeah, I declared I uh, smoked marijuana one day, the morning that you guys called me on the 19th. I declared that I smoked marijuana and I entered the RTP pool on the 20th. So there was no way I was going to pass a marijuana test. So you, you listed that on, on the paperwork, and then what did they tell you? Because you must have been worried, in, you know, somewhat. I got a call from the UFC later on that I had. Um, so there was more paperwork involved. Um, there was Nevada Athletic State Commission paperwork also involved. And um, on the Nevada Athletic State Commission paperwork, um, they said that I missed a check mark or something about declaring it again. Um, keep in mind that, I was. I had to go back to the skill. I had to make weight twice. It was a very hard day for me. We entered the RTP pool. I that was the drug testing program. Me being outside of UFC, I know USADA is drug testing you. You know, so I wrote it down. I declared to USADA. Everything was to USADA when it came down to the other paperwork. I was skinny. I wasn't even awake. Um, they said I missed the check mark. The UFC called me later on that day. They said, Hey, Trevin, you forgot to check mark this on this paper. And they, because they saw the USADA was declared and they saw, I guess it wasn't declared under the commission, I guess. They called me. I thought everything got fixed when they called me over the phone. They said, Trevor, you forgot to declare it here. You're supposed to declare it here too, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but they said, even though I declared it there, the um, we spoke about all that. Um, they were still going to overturn it to a no contest and everything just because I had smoke prior to entering the UFC. And, and it didn't really make sense to me because... I feel like, why did you guys make me fight? Like, why did you guys make me put my life on the line? So that's where I'm coming from. Like, you don't make someone put your life on the line and you go out there and I really had no way to win. They're pretty much saying, only thing I, only thing I pretty much did, yeah, I got paid, I won money, but um, pretty much I had no way to win. It was always going to be a loss or a no contest going into the fight. And that's the part I'm mad about. Th that's the part that's confusing to me is why did they even give you a license if they knew all of this? Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. That's the part that I don't understand. Um, I got the call from the UFC, and the UFC told me that I forgot to declare it under the commission. Um, we talked about it. I thought it was fixed, and we came to this day, and I'm very confused, too, because it was nothing that we were trying to hide. The first thing I did was talk to them about that I smoked marijuana the day before, man. That's why I'm so mad. I am so mad because I told him this from the jump. Like, it was the only thing I was worried about. Like, when I got the call and I got excited, I was like, I smoked marijuana this morning. And then um, I thought it was all good, man, that I let them know. The process kept going. As the process kept going, I got more out of it. I was, I cut 16 pounds in 34 hours. I was out of it. I wasn't even there. I was not there. And I just remember getting the UFC call. Fighting and winning. That's how fast the process went by for me. Um, and that's what it was, man. Their decision was made. We've been talking about this for a while. Um, I got papers from um, USADA. USADA went into my urine and they checked um, the urinalysis if I smoked in the two days. They concluded that I didn't smoke in the two days. And that's a fact. So I was able to get my money. I was able to get my bonus and everything because the UFC has a law that prior to entering the, the testing pool, if you declared it and stuff, that you should be good. And keep in mind, man, um, say if they say I missed it under the commission, I was so out of it, at least take it to note and look at the 
the USADA paper that actually tested me, they were the ones testing when it came to anything that dealt with drugs and cheating. I thought it was reported to them for sure. And everything on that paperwork was all facts. They sent it over to the... Um, they sent it over to the UFC. They sent it over to the uh, Athletic Commission. They wrote letters. I spoke to them on it. And the commission just makes their own decisions on things like this. Um, I don't want to fight it too much because, of course, it gets worse if you fight it, man. The suspension gets longer. No one wants an 18-month suspension. I just got into the UFC, so I'm not going to go into it with all that. Um, at the end of the day, I feel every time I go into the UFC cage, it's 0-0 versus anybody. Everyone there is talented. Everyone there has titles from all around the world. So every time I get in there, you could be 20 and 0. You lose three fights in a row, you're on. You, you might get cut because you weren't good enough to compete with those guys. Um, you could be 7 and 0, only getting into the UFC, and you can win five fights in a row, and you could be on your way to the title shot or a top 10. So that's how it works inside there. I'm, I'm just taking that. I'm just looking at it in that way, and I know I could beat guys. I know I could beat more guys. I know I fought Tamir on two days' notice. My leg wasn't under me. I was marijuana lag, if they want to say, because I went cold turkey. I was I was cold turkey out there, and I still got it done on 20%. So I already know I could beat UFC guys, man. Um, I got more fire from this. Um, it was nothing I can really do, man. Um, the only thing I did was when they called me, I didn't smoke marijuana no more. I knew I was in the UFC now, and the outcome just was the outcome was. I had no control over this. So when they were making this ruling... I, I believe on Wednesday, you you weren't able to be there and defend yourself at all. Um, so I took a plea agreement. I took a plea agreement. Um, I was fighting with them. I wrote them letters on the plea agreement that hey, um, look guys, um, you guys have the paperwork from USADA. The people that actually actually tested me, they said how they how they didn't punish me. Why aren't you guys taking the same um, concept? Um, they also wrote a letter to the UFC. Why the UFC didn't punish me? They they're also taking the same concept as USADA, but Nevada Athletic Commission said, "Hey, you missed it on our paper," and they were said they were going to overturn it no matter what. There was a little um there was a little paperwork messed up under the Nevada Commission, but I got the call from the UFC and I thought all the paperwork was fixed later on in the day, and this was a minor mistake, one little check mark. You guys have the notes from USADA, the people that actually tested, like I said earlier, like I declared this off the bat. It's in notes, it's in writing. I have it in my email. They have it in their email. Um, they said over the limit is a performing enhancer. So, th and that's why they overturned it. I don't know how smoking three days ago before a fight and not smoking in those three days and it's a performance enhancer, but that's what their ruling was. Yeah, that that's very confusing to me is because you had USADA check your urine and they said clearly that you did not smoke in those days leading up, mm -hmm. but they still yeah. are not going to make a special case for you since you took the exactly. fight on three days notice. Exactly. That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Exactly. That's what they don't want to do. They're just playing hardball and that's what they want to do. You just said it exactly how it is. They don't want to make a special case to look into my case. Or anything like that. I argued, bro. I argued for since the fight ended. I wrote, we wrote two, three letters, and it's really just something that was in, a, in my hands. I felt I did nothing wrong. Was I gonna say no to my UFC debut? Hell no. Mm -hmm. I did nothing wrong. I did absolutely nothing wrong. I quit. I quit. And marijuana's no performing enhancer, man. Like I, I didn't have any steroids. Cheat the real cheaters, bro. Mm -hmm. Cheat the real guys that are out there trying to cheat. I can see, but you guys have paperwork and evidence of a guy that wasn't clearly cheating or nothing. So that's, like I said, that's their call, man. They made that call. And the way I look at it is, like I said, everyone, every time I go in that cage, I got to win. So my next fight, I got to win. Mm. My next fight after that, I got to win. So I just got to keep winning and, and they'll get a race when I just keep winning. You went back and, and looked at Jamal Hill, Tim Elliott, Luis Pena, mm -hmm. those cases, and kind of compared it to mm -hmm. your case. What was the biggest difference mm -hmm. you saw? The biggest difference is they were all in the UFC already. So, yes, they took late fight, late notice fights already, but they were already in. in, a, in. That's their fault for taking a late notice fight when they were already in the UFC. They had no business taking late notice fights. Whoever, which whatever, whatever, whichever one of them took late notice fights. Um, they had no business taking a late notice fight. Maybe they needed money. Some situation was different. But they had no business because they were already in a drug testing program by USADA and they understood the rules already, you know? They understood that they're going to have to pee in two days. They understood that if they 
sign the paper, they're going to enter competition, and then therefore they might fail their drug test. That was the difference in their case versus mine. My case, I was not into the UFC, and I and UFC also has a law 2.7.1 or 2.1.7 that says prior to entering, if you declare it, you did not commit an anti-doping violation, and that's why I was able to get my money, and that's why I was able because I declared it, and it was an anti-doping violation on the fact that you saw to determine that I didn't use since I entered the RTP pool, and that's where I thought I was winning. So at the end of the day, yes, I knew I smoked, yes, I fought, and yes, this was going on, but the whole time I thought I was cool because everything was legit. It says that you're suspended for 4.5 months or four and a half months or whatever. So when exactly mm -hmm. are you free to fight? January 5th. Man, did it sting, mm -hmm. man? 4.5 months? That's pretty heavy, don't you believe? Um, I wanted to fight in December, so it's a month after I wanted to fight, so I'm not complaining. They called me to fight on Fight Island about two to three weeks after my fight. Two weeks after my fight, I turned it down because I wanted a full camp. I wanted to look really, really sharp. Um, I don't want to cut corners. Um, when I get to see my opponent early, I'm even better than people will even imagine. And yeah, 4.5 months wasn't a problem. Nothing was the problem to me besides the no contest. Even if they wanted to find me because it was in my system, what they find me ain't nothing, bro. It's, it's change. It's not even what people are thinking. It's a little money. I think that's the only area that was fair because... They didn't even find me nothing. I don't want to say the number, but it's it's dirt. It's not. I'm not even mad about the fine. So the fine's cool. If you want to suspend me for four and a half months, that's one month after I plan on fighting anyway. But the no contest, the guy had a full camp, man. The guy was ready, ready, bro. Like, I declared this. You guys have extra paperwork. Look into something. You guys going to give him back a win like that? And it's just not fair. I'm just happy they didn't take all my money and, and stuff back because that would have been the... That would have been crazy. Um, the reason why they didn't take my money and everything because it was declared and the UFC has their own rules. Um, the Nevada Athletic Commission don't follow the UFC rules and that's where the problem came into play. I did not get in trouble by the UFC. I did not get in trouble by USADA. USADA, you get three strikes. I have no strikes. I, I, I don't have one mark. Everything was done correctly. It's just with the commission... They don't want to look into the paperwork, and they want to do what they want to do with it. On the UFC side, there's there's no problems with you in nope. the UFC at all. Nope. And, not in uh, trouble at all with the UFC. Not in trouble at all with USADA. Nothing. It's crazy, right? And yeah. USADA tested me. USADA tested me, and and there I'm not even in trouble with them. And mm -hmm. these guys don't. Man, I don't know how it works. There's some higher powers over there or something. I don't know how it works. My side's not strong enough to get it done. I don't know what it really was, but I know it's really unfair. And there is paperwork that's shown that I didn't cheat, that marijuana's not even cheating, that I didn't mm -hmm. that I didn't use since I got the call. That's the true thing. And and the paperwork's there. I have the paperwork. They have the paperwork. The UFC have the paperwork. To get your license back, it says that you have to submit uh, three drug tests to get your Las Vegas mm -hmm. license back. But that doesn't have to do nothing with Fight Island, does it? No, it doesn't. It's only for Nevada. That's only depending if I fight in Nevada. I still want to fight in Nevada. I wanna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat someone up, and I'm gonna be like, take this one away, take this one away. So that's the first people I want to get in front of them when I whip my next guy. That's the first people I want to get in front of. You know, I just say uh, God's looking out for me. I've been on three wins, four wins in a row, and then um, you know, you get comfortable and you let that one slip. You know, those close split decisions. You know, like I have. So this keeps me on my toes. It lets me know, okay, you know, now I can go out and win two, three more because you got, you're got mad, you're fired up, you know? So I'm just taking all the positive angles with it. And like I said, it was really out of my hand. I didn't want to fight fight too hard with it because I'm new to the UFC, bro. I don't want to, I don't want to be suspended for 18 months. Now I can't fight. I can't fulfill my contract. Now I'm in and out. So that's the only only reason why, you know, they, they, we wrote a couple letters and we didn't want to push too much. We didn't want to, you know, they laid down their rules. They said what they had to say and we're here today. Um, I knew about it already. I had posted about it a couple of days ago. I was so mad because they were like, we wrote the last letter and every letter we hit them with was so good, bro. It was so correct. It was so professional. If any other person hears these letters or any other human to human um, goes over these letters, it's perfectly correct. It's exactly what happened. It's exactly how it went down. They followed their own rules. That's what happened. That's the only thing that happened here. 
if people want to say, uh, I cheated, which they won't be even saying that. It's only marijuana. But if uh, Tamir and his team then want to be complaining or whatever, bro, they got blessed. They got blessed on this, getting the getting his win streak back. Um, I was on two days' notice, bro. There was no way I was going to get TAC out of my system in two days. So it was what it was, and there was no way I was going to say no to my UFC debut. So it's, I'm frustrated. I've been frustrated, man. I Hard to talk, but... There's nothing I can do besides whoop on the next guy. You know me. You know my career. I had weird things all the time, man. So, man, I'm, I, I get stronger from things like this. I always do, man. I always do. You know, I'll go on a streak still. And when I go on a streak still, they'll see, like, yeah, he did beat that guy. He was that good. So that's what I got to prove now. I'm just going to prove that I'm just – I'm a savage out there, you know? Now, with yourself, you're, you're back in Guam, right? Mm-hmm. So now what's back the plan? Home. Are you going to train there for your next camp? Or are you going to go back to Vegas? What are you going to do? Well, um, I'll be here now. <laughs> I'm suspended. Uh, <laughs> I'm suspended. But I'll be here for like the next month. Um, Probably November November 5th. I'll be leaving back to the States, Nevada yeah. first. Um, I'll probably be going to California. Um, Train with um, Archuleta, TJ and them. My manager wants to put me with them. That's my plan. But we also reached out to Henry Hoof. So, um, I, I'm, you know, I like Henry Hoof. I watch him a lot online. I like how the boys work over there. And he said, I'm welcome. He welcomed me. He said he saw my last fight because we emailed. We talked. Um, my manager and them, they emailed him and they talked to him. And he said he watched my last fight, everything. He would love to have me over there. So, yeah, I'll be in one of those two places within the next month. And I'll be training hard like a monster for my next fight, man. I'll be going. I'm, I'm fired up, man. I'm, I really am, man. This uh, it bothers me, man. It's such a big win on my record, and you know they're gonna take it away from me like that. On when I had odd odds against me already, two days notice, no camp, him full camp, fully prepared. I had to go to the skill twice. Um, marijuana don't make you faster, don't make you stronger, it don't make you more powerful. You know he. That could be the reason he got that 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 whooping in the first round because I went cold turkey, you know what I'm saying? And I still got it done on 20% battery, so you know I know I could beat guys. You know if he wants to cry about a rematch or whatever, yeah, go win two fights. I'm gonna win two more fights, and then yeah, I'll give you that same again because you better know that was a real win. That's all I want him to know. I want him to know that was a real win. That's, he's the only guy I need to prove. And he knows it, so I'm okay. I'm okay with the with what everyone else can see. The ones that are with me are with me. The ones that are not are not. The ones that are just out there just to troll or just out there to troll. But um, only person I really want to know that was a real win is him, and he knows that. Go back to the States in November, get that training in, find your new camp, and uh, we'll see what mm -hmm. happens, man, in January. Hopefully uh, Vegas mm -hmm. again. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, Nevada, I'm gonna see you guys soon. I'm gonna put on a performance in front of you guys, and you guys are not gonna be able to take that one away, man. Um, this is this is ludicrous, bro. It really is. I showed up, man. I put everything on the line. The weight cut alone was hard. The first round alone was, you know, people people on the outside say it was hard, but I'm tough. I know I could take damage like that, you know. Um, it was only the kick that got me, and you know, I protected myself the best way I can. I went into the corner, I recovered like a pro, and I came back with, with no fear of the damage, with no no sign of showing that I took a first round like that. Did I come back and do what I did and have them take it away from me? It doesn't make sense. And they have paperwork on it, so it, it really it really sucks on my book. But um, as long as everyone knows what really happened out there, I got videos in my phone, I can go back and watch it. I know what happened out there. Hey guys, Sasha Platnikoff here, letting you know to tune in to SCMP Post Fight for all your weekly martial arts news.